Blessings Church family, and welcome to our online refire service. So good to be in the house of the Lord. We're excited. Brandy's going to be sharing the word of God tonight. It's going to be good. Invite somebody. Invite your entire friend list. I know Facebook doesn't let them all go out, but get out as many as we can, right? So let's go ahead and open in prayer and have an awesome time tonight, fellowshipping with one another online. Father, we bless you again, and we thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be very, very glad in it. From the rising of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Lord, as we're starting to enjoy a little warmer weather and get that feel of spring in the air, we thank you that we know what that means. Resurrection Sunday is just a little time away, but for us, Resurrection Sunday is every day. So we come to worship. We come to exalt the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, join Matt, and let's worship him tonight. Let me 
sing this out.
just thank you for this time of worship. I thank you, Lord, that your name, the name of Jesus is above all names, that the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this. I thank you, Lord, for the word that's going to go forth. And I thank you that it goes forth with power and authority. And Lord, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor because you deserve it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this awesome time of glorifying your name. We thank you for the joy of our salvation. We are hashtag looking up because we're hashtag at warp speed because hashtag scripture is being fulfilled. Hallelujah. We're going to receive communion and have a time of prayer. If you want to go ahead and get some communion stuff together and then we'll start off with prayer tonight. Amen. Diane, would you go ahead and pray over Father, we lift up every prayer request that came in on Sunday, every re request that came in tonight. Lord, we thank you that you are a need-meeting God. You said that if we pray in faith, believing, we'll receive. That if two of us agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it will be done. So tonight, we come in agreement with our church family, and we thank you for prayers answered, needs met. Lord, we thank you for healing in bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. 
that every, everything that would try to come against their body, we curse it in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for total healing, release in Jesus' name. We thank you for relationships being restored. We thank you for marriages being restored, for family relationships, sons and daughters coming home. We thank you for, for brothers and sisters, relationships healed in Jesus' name. We thank you for peace, that peace that passes all understanding, mounting guard over our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. I thank you for release for emotional problems, release for mental problems, healing, wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we lift up before you first our nation, Lord. We pray for those that are in authority. We pray that you will lift up the godly, bring down the ungodly. Lord, we know we can't stop all the stuff that's going on, but we can slow it down as we approach closer to the day of the Lord. We pray, Father, for those that are in authority in every realm, be it political, be it educational, be it on the media, arts and entertainment, the church, Father, be it in businesses, Lord, in every area, we pray, Father, for godly people to rise up, to hold back darkness until after the return of the Lord. And we thank you for that. We pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You said that you would bless those that bless Abraham, you would curse those that curse Abraham. Well, we bless them now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we prepare our hearts for communion, Diane, would you lead us with the bread? We thank you for the bread, Father. Lord, we just thank you that you cut a covenant with Abraham. You, um, you did a new covenant with Jesus. His body was broken. And as we are in him... We are in this covenant. So we thank you for that broken body. We thank you for the covenant of healing for our bodies, our minds, for our souls being restored. Thank you, Jesus, that every pain you bore, every sickness, every disease, every stripe on your body was for our healing and restoration. We receive that right now as we partake of your broken body in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for the broken body, Lord. And we proclaim right now, I proclaim for my wife, for my children, my grandchildren, for the church family, for healing, physical healing in our bodies in Jesus' name. Thank you for the covenant. Because of your blood being shed, we are in right standing with you, Lord. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are new creations, spanky brand new. You said new species of beings that never existed before. It's all because of the blood. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Lord, now we thank you for the word that's going to come forth tonight, Lord. It'll come forth in power, and we thank you for the anointing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Church family, God is good. Hey, I announced on Sunday we got a bunch of things going on for uh, our Easter week. We start off with... First Wednesday, hallelujah, we're going to have a baptism service that's on April 6th. Then that following Sunday, the Sunday that comes up right after that, will be Palm Sunday, and the kids are going to have their great Easter hunt, hunt, not hunt, hunt coming on. Then the men, we got our Good Friday breakfast back this year, and it's going to be at the Hampton Diner in Newton. 8 a.m. You need to sign up online on the app or at the Welcome Center because they need a count over there. Then that night, we're going to have our special Good Friday communion service, 7 p.m. And then Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, 9 and 11, going to be over the top because God is good. Amen. Man, God is good. God is good. Well, hello, welcome to CFFC Online. I'm Brandy, and I want to welcome you to our Wednesday evening service. So we say our vision each and every week, so let's go ahead and do that. So we are a praying church. We are a going church, and we are a life 
life-changing church. And we are also a family church, and we are reaching and impacting people with the love of Jesus. So I got a few announcements for you. Ladies, if you didn't sign up, we can still take sign up. So grab your phone or if you're on it right now, go right to that events tab. Click on the ladies advance. We got 75, 80 tricky tray items. We're going to worship together, have communion together, have some awesome messages together, eat together. Just an awesome day, ladies. You don't want to miss it. If you want to invite your friends and family, you certainly can. So go on and make sure that you register so that we know how many of you are coming. It's going to be Saturday, this Saturday, from 9 to 3 p.m. You don't want to miss it. We even have a bunch of grand prizes. Just an awesome, awesome day. One of my favorite events that we have here. Also, Joy, Just Older Youth, 50 years old and older. They are going to be having dinner and a movie. Well, actually, they're going to be doing a potluck dinner, so that means everybody needs to bring something. They want you to sign up online. It's free but they want you to let them know what you're bringing so that they have uh, everything accounted for. So that is going to be April 1st, 6 p.m. right here at the church in the gym. First Wednesdays of the month, we're bringing it back. So we're going to be in-house on the first Wednesday of every month. So if you're ever looking at your calendar, you say, oh, that's the first Wednesday. You know there's church going to be at 7 p.m. First Wednesday of every month. This uh, April, we're kicking it off April the 6th. 7 p.m., and it's with a baptism service. So if you have not been water baptized, now's the time to take the plunge. So go ahead, go right on to that events tab, click on water baptism, you can sign up. Gives you all the details there, uh, what you need to bring. There's a class ahead of time, a few other things uh, that you might want to prepare with your testimony and things, uh, but you can sign up easily right there, and that's going to be an awesome service, one of my favorites too. That's all I got, church family, and we will see you on Sunday. Hey, church family, let's continue our worship by the giving of his tithes and our offerings because we are a giving church, amen? The ways to give are up on the screen, and you can choose the one that bets for you. Um, this evening, I'd like to um, read to you a devotional I found in Offering Talks, and it is entitled, What You Give. I once read a quote by the great British statesman, Winston Churchill. He said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. As simple as it is to agree with that statement in our minds, we often disagree with it in our actions. If we're being honest with each other, generosity can be extremely difficult. In our culture, a person's worth and or promise is often determined by their financial portfolio. A good job, a nice house, a fast car. Yet in God's kingdom, the opposite is true. The story of Jesus flips all of this on its head. We must do our best to live the truth of the gospel out in the way that we view and understand money. Psalm 119, 36 says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Rather than trust in money to sustain us, we should instead trust in God, our ultimate sustainer. I encourage you to reflect on this truth as we take up the offering this evening. Our giving, our generosity is a statement to God and others. We trust him rather than we trust stuff. Sure, we make a living through our paycheck, but as Churchill noted, we make a life by being generous. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we lift up the offering today, we ask you to bless it, Father. God, we thank you, God, that you have given us generous hearts, Father, those that love you and love others. God, as we give today, we ask you, Lord, to bless the offering in a way, Lord, that others, God, would be blessed. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hello, welcome uh, to our Wednesday night service. Uh, my name is Brandy, and I'm going to be continuing uh, the series that uh, Pastor Tom and uh, Reverend Bob Meeker uh, has been doing, and we are going to be continuing Victory in Jesus. Amen. So before we get, uh, get started here, I want to go ahead, I want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into 
the word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you this evening. We just thank you, Father, that your word goes forth with power and authority. Lord, we lift up the message tonight. We, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you just open our hearts and open our minds, Lord, to be to receive. Father, I pray that you would use me, Father, that I would speak with clarity, Lord, and accuracy. And I just thank you, Father, uh, for this service and for this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So in John 10, 10, and in the Amplified uh, translation, it says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you have life and you have it more abundant to the full till it overflows. Amen. So Jesus came that we can have life and we can have it more abundant abundantly. So we have victory through him. Amen, church family. So we have power over the enemy because of all that Jesus Christ did for us. You know, I love the word abundant. I love the word overflow. Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't want an abundant overflow? But that not that what Jesus came to give us? But I also love the word power. See, the name of Jesus gives us power. It gives us that authority when we use that name. So what does the word power mean? Power means what? Power means strength. There is power or strength in the name of Jesus, right? So my message tonight is going to be um, entitled, His Name is Power, amen? His name is power. His name is strength. You know, we've been singing a song, a new song here at church, and I, and I absolutely love it, where it says, I speak Jesus. It's so precious because it says, I speak Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over my fears. I speak Jesus over my anxieties, right? Because why? Because that name has authority. When you speak the name of Jesus, you are using that with authority, and you say, in the name of Jesus, fear go. In the name of Jesus, anxiety go. Fear goes. Anxiety goes. Why? Because of the precious name of Jesus. Jesus is peace. Jesus is protection. Jesus is comfort. Uh, Jesus is deliverance. Jesus is healing. Amen. The name of Jesus has power. And we have all those things because we have Jesus, right? But we have to choose to walk in that, right? We have to choose to walk and that authority. In John 19, uh, 28 through 30, Jesus said this. Um, he's, he's talking about it is finished. He says, um, when Jesus uttered the words, it is finished on the cross in John 19, he was speaking on behalf of us all. Those who have accepted Jesus as their Savior, we are victorious through the blood of the Lamb, right? So let's look at that word power. The word power says this. It's the right or the authority that's been given to or delegated to a person like the government, it says, or police, right? So if a police officer's on the road and they're telling you to stop, you, st you stop. Why? Because they have the authority to tell you to stop when they're on the roadway, right? So see, Jesus, when we use the name of Jesus, we have authority. He said he gave us that authority, right? Um, so when we use that name, it gives us power over all the enemy has that could be throwing at us. It gives us power in situations in our life, right? In Luke 10, 17, in the NLT, and this is where um, there, was, there was different men, disciples going out, and they were speaking to people in the, um, in the towns and the villages, and they came back to tell Jesus this. This is what they said. This is in the NLT. They came back joyfully and reported to him, which is Jesus, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Do you see that? Even the demons obey when they use what? The precious name of Jesus, amen, and the power and the authority behind that name. Luke 10, 19 in the Amplified. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that is now that you now possess. See, we have the authority. We possess the authority to trample on scorpion, uh, 
serpents and scorpions, and I love this one. Now I'm jumping from the Amplified to the, to the Passion Translation, to trample over Satan's kingdom and the ability to exercise that authority. We have the ability to exercise that authority over all the power that the enemy and, uh, throws at us and nothing will in any way harm you. Do you see that? When you use that name uh, in the name of Jesus, we have authority and we can exercise that authority and nothing in any way will harm you. So let's talk about what the word name means. What does the word Name means. So when you call somebody by their name, what? In essence, you're really saying to them, so when you call somebody, like for example, we have a Hannah, um, uh, one of our triplet daughters is named it Hannah. So when we call her, uh, we are saying favored one. So we're actually saying, so when you call somebody by their name, their name means something, right? And we're calling her and saying favored one. We have a Sarah, we could say, when we call her, we say princess, right? Or Rebecca, captivating. So what are we saying? When we call somebody by their name, really we're calling them by what their name means, right? So many times in the Bible you see that people are named certain things, and it's a lot of times the parents were naming them based on what they thought their nature was or they're kind of prophesying over that, that, that child or whatever. But, I mean, think of the one name that I can think of where the mother said, this was Jabez, where the mother said, I bore her, him in pain, so I named him Jabez. So for life, she's calling him Jabez. Basically, you're a pain, you're a nuisance, you're no good, so to speak. She named him Jabez because that's what his name meant. I bore him in pain, right? But maybe that's why... Perhaps that's why many of uh, the people in the Bible, God changed their name. I mean, look at Jacob. He went to what? Israel, chosen by God, right? So he was cho choosing that name and calling him by something else. Amen. Now, we did have, um, when we were trying to decide to have some of our, um, when we were choosing our three girls' names, um, there was one that I really liked, but then when I went and looked it up, it was it, the, the meeting was unfavored. And I said, yeah, I'm not naming her that because uh, I'm not going to be calling her unfavored, so to speak, um, for life. So we changed that and, and uh, we, we decided on a different name, which was actually Sarah, which means um, princess. So listen, um, let's look at what the word Jesus means. So we looked already at what the word power means, authority. We looked at the name or um, we looked at what the word... Um, what do we just say? What name means, what we call people. And then also, let's look at what the word Jesus means. So in Hebrews, it means Yeshua, or it means salvation, deliverer, rescuer, right? Jesus saves, the Lord of salvation. What does salvation mean? It means to deliver from harm, from ruin, or from loss. And you know what's awesome is when I look this up online, in this, it says the second definition of salvation is this. Deliverance from sins and its consequences and believed by Christians to be brought about by their faith in Christ. Now think about that. Salvation means, so Jesus means salvation, and salvation means to deliver from harm, ruin, or loss. And it says that salvation means that you are delivered from your sins and its consequences, and Christians believe that by having faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have eternal life when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And 1 John 5, uh, 13 through 50 and the uh, New King James Version, it says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions we ask of him. Hallelujah. Thank you for the finished work of the cross. Amen. And because we, because he went to the cross, we don't have to be condemned. We are not going to hell. Once we've accepted him as Lord and Savior, we are no longer uh, uh, condemned and going to hell, but we are going because of that great sacrifice, that great love. We are going to heaven to be with him someday. Amen. Jesus sacrificed sacrifice on the cross that day gave us eternal life.
In Romans 10, 9, it says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. And here's what I love. In the Passion Translation in Acts 4.12, listen to this. There is no one else who has the power to save, for there is only one name. We said the name of Jesus, right? There's only one name to whom God has given authority by which we experience salvation. And that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, that name is Jesus. We are freed from condemnation. We don't have to go to hell. No, because why? We accept him as our Lord and Savior, and we are going to heaven. We are going to heaven. Hallelujah. So what does the Bible say about the power in the name of Jesus? So let's take a look at that. What does the Bible say about the power in the name of Jesus? So Matthew 1, 21 in the Amplified, it says that she will give birth to a son and you will give him a name and that name is Jesus, the Lord of salvation. Didn't we just say that that's what that meant? Because he will save his people from his sins. Didn't we just look at the word salvation and the definition was what? He saves you from your sins and your consequences right here because he will save his people from their sins. Philippians 2, 9. Jesus is the name that is above every name. So it's not just merely saying Jesus. No, it's possessing that authority behind that name and using that name in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, fear go. In Jesus' name, anxieties go, right? Philippians 2.9. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of, of those on heaven on those in earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow. The name that is above every name, the name that is above fear, the name that is above anxiety, the name that brings peace, hallelujah, right? In the Passion Translation, it says because of this obedience, and this is still Philippians 2, 9, but this is Passion. God exalted him, multiplied his greatness, I love this, and has now been given the greatest of all names. So when we speak the name of Jesus, we have healing comes. When we speak the name of Jesus, provision comes. When we speak the name of Jesus, peace comes, protection comes, comfort comes. You are complete in him. So speak that name and use it with authority and say, no, I'm not going to have anxiety. I'm going to speak the name of Jesus and I'm going to receive your peace in Jesus name so we just we speak with authority authority that that's behind that name and Romans 10 13 uh, the new King James it says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved and the Greek word here for salvation is sozo and sozo means the process of being saved healed delivered rescued set free protected and becoming completely healed isn't that Jesus saved healed delivered rescued set free protected and completely whole hallelujah call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved you will be saved. You know, we have heard different stories here where people have used the name of Jesus and things have changed. Miracles have taken place, amen? Miracles have taken place. Jesus is the reason for miracles. I can tell you, we've heard stories where people were in car accidents. They know they're going to literally go into a tree. They yell, Jesus! Why? The protection to, 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 to take care of them. They're going towards a tree. They're going to have a car accident. And somehow, some way, the car goes the other way, right? Why is that? Because Jesus is our protector. Jesus is still doing miracles. I can tell you another story. We have several in our family that when you use this name, we see miracles take place. My mother recently had a fall maybe a year or so ago, and she, when she fell, she basically face-planted. The first thing that she did was she come straight down on her face, and she literally was laying on the ground, and she had no feeling from her neck down. So her arms, her legs, her core, she couldn't feel anything. When the, the EMT got there, when, the, when the, the medics got there, she could feel nothing from her neck down. 
She lay on the floor and she said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that went on for a half an hour and she kept saying, Jesus, life, bring life, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She had her husband go and get anointing oil and literally dump it on her. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know they came in, they were able to get her on that, take her to the hospital. And my mother walks today and has all of her uh, uh, organs working properly. Why? Because Jesus came in and he healed her. Jesus came in and brought life back into her body. Jesus is the reason because she called out to the name of Jesus and he does miracles today hallelujah John 14 12 through 14 I tell you this timeless truth the person who follows me in faith believing in me will do the same mighty miracles that I do even greater miracles than these because I go to the father and verse 13 this is in a passion for I will do whatever you ask me to do when you ask in my name. She was asking, my mother was asking in his name, in Jesus' name. And that is how the son will show what the father is really like and bring glory to him. Ask me anything in my name and I will do it. Didn't we just see that in Luke where they said, "Uh, Jesus, if we say it in your name, even the demons flee, amen? Amen. I'll tell you another story that we had that was similar to this in our family that I can tell you that the name of Jesus brought a miracle into our family. And see, I don't tell you these things for me. I don't tell you these things to bring glory to like my mother, what she did, or to bring glory for what my husband and I did. I tell you these things because I know it's truth. I know that Jesus works. I know he still does miracles. But I was pregnant with our second son, and I it was probably, I was a good four months in, and I started bleeding and on the way to the hospital I ended up in a puddle of blood I know that sounds a little bit a lot but whenever I realized I sneezed and I had this pressure and I ended up in blood well what happens when you're pregnant and that happens you know you probably just lost that baby right so my husband grabs his golf clubs that are behind with the, 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 the rags that are on them, gets them, and I walk into the doctor's office, and I am covered, and they take towels, and they're wrapping them around me, and you could tell they were just running around like crazy. But at the moment when that happened in that car that day, I will never forget it. You know why? Because the minute that he saw that, my husband looked over. He's driving down Route 46. He looked over. He saw what happened, and I got scared. I jumped like because it was just so overwhelming when, when this happens to you. And he looked over, and he said, in the name of Jesus, and see, there's where it was. That's, that's the answer. In the name of Jesus, you will not die, but you will live. Satan, I bind you up. You go, and this baby will live and go to full term. Well, you know what? I got a Jonah today who's 16 years old, and he's walking, and I delivered him and carried him to full term. Why? Because we spoke the name of Jesus. That is what Jesus, he's a miracle-working God, and he loves us. And when we spoke that name of Jesus. I believe that's why I carried him to this day. I do believe it. It's not about what we did, but I will tell you, I think you could have, we could have had a different outcome because, but I know my Jesus was with us that day. And I know he was the reason that I carried that boy to full term. Amen. These are the things that we can tell. When we tell these things, what does it do? It builds other people's faith so they can say, gee, I'm going, you know, I'm going through this hard time. Speak Speak Jesus. My marriage is falling apart. Speak Jesus. My kids are on drugs. Speak Jesus. That's your answer. Jesus is the answer. Stop allowing the devil to fill your mind with this crazy stuff. Stop allowing that and speak Jesus to those things that are trying to torment you, to those habits that are just keep coming back. Speak Jesus, amen, speak that authority in the name of Jesus and you will see miracles happen, amen. The name of Jesus is all authority. And when we speak that name, we should be believing for and expecting things to happen. When we speak that name, there is a purpose, a goal, and an expectation, right? There's an intention when we say that name. Jesus, there's authority when we say that name. There is power when we speak that name. So when we pray in Jesus' name, we are praying in his, for his will and his authority that's behind that name, amen? Praying in Jesus' name means the same thing as praying according to his will. 
This is uh, 1 John 5, 14 through 15, and this is an NIV. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, and if we know he hears us, he will, um, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So when we pray the name of Jesus, we are in praying in agreement with his will, amen? Praying the name of Jesus, trust that as you place your request before God, that his power will be released in your situation. The New King James Version um, of John 14, 13 uh, through 14 says this, And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and you uh, may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So when you're facing a situation, you speak Jesus. If you need strength in a situation, speak Jesus over that. If you need peace, you speak Jesus. If you need protection, speak Jesus. If you need provision, speak Jesus. Tell those fears to flee in Jesus' name, amen? You know, I have a, a funny story that um, when my kids were small, all five of them, of course, were little and home together, um, um, and, you know, I had a, a triplets who were infants, and then we had Jonah and Noah who were like one, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and then infants. And when I would get overwhelmed with all the kids at home, if I didn't have someone there to help me, I would literally start saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why was I doing that? Because I needed strength and I needed help at that moment. So my kids started to realize that when they would hear mama saying, Jesus, 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 they knew, uh-oh, that's our cue. She needs help. She needs something. What do you need, mama? You need me to bring you a diaper? What do you, what do you need, mama? So my oldest son would know, Noah, if, he, if he'd hear that, he better go and help me, right? But it was funny because one day I, I went somewhere, and there was someone with uh, my girl or my kids, and they were diapering them on the floor, the girls, and she started saying, she was actually praying, and she kept saying, Jesus. Jesus. So instantly they jump up and they're like, okay, what can we do to help you? Do you need help? What do you need? Why? Because they realized that when I started calling out to Jesus, I was getting overwhelmed. So when they hear the babysitter saying, Jesus, 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 they know, oh, she must need help because she's calling out to the Lord and she needs help. So that's just a cute little story, but it's a way I made it through five little ones at home, but it gave me strength to make it through because I called on him and he gave me that strength each and every day to be a mama of five at home, amen? So in Acts 3, this is where Peter and John, um, I, wanna, I, have, I wanna read this story. It's a little bit longer, but I wanna read this. This is in Acts 3. Peter and J uh, John, this is where they're using the name of Jesus where they healed the crippled man, okay? And, and what happened in the town uh, whenever he, uh, when this uh, man was healed. So in Acts 3, 1 through 11, uh, and I'm going to read this one from the Passion Translation again. Um, verse 1, one afternoon, Peter and John went to the temple at the 3 o'clock hour of prayer. As they came to the entrance called Beautiful Gate, they were capt uh, captured by the sight of a man crippled from birth and being carried there and placed at the entrance of the temple. He was often brought there to beg for money from those who were going in to worship. Verse 3, when he, uh, when he noticed uh, Peter and John going into the temple, he begged them for money. Peter and John said, looking straight into the eyes of the crippled man, look at us. So Peter and John are saying to this crippled guy, look at us. Turn your head and look over here. Look at us. Now, if they say that, you're going to look, right? And now, uh, verse 5, expecting a gift, he thought they were going to give him money, he readily gave them his attention. Then Peter said, I don't have money, but what I do have, I'll give you. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And Peter held out his, hand, his right hand to the crippled man. As he pulled the man to his feet, suddenly power surged through the crippled man's feet and ankles. The man jumped up, stood there for 
for a moment, totally stunned. Now you can imagine that this guy's been laying there for years, old, you know, being brought there every, every, every day, lay him there, get some money. That's what he's been doing day in and day out. But he stands up and he's stunned. He's standing on his, his feet, his legs. He began to walk around as they went into the temple courts, as he went with Peter and John in the temple courts. He leaped for joy, shouting praise to God. When all the people saw him jumping up and down and heard him glorifying God, they realized this was the tripled, crippled, this was the crippled beggar that had passed by in front of the beautiful gate. Astonished, they were swept over the astonishment just swept over the crowd, for they were amazed at what they were seeing. Peter, um, so uh, verse 11, dumbfounded over what they were witnessing. So these crowds were looking at this man who had been crippled all this time. Here he is walking around with them, jumping. It says he's jumping up and down. He's going crazy. He's so excited, right? Dumbfounded over what they're witnessing. The crowd ran over to Peter and John, who were standing under the covered walkway called Solomon's Porch. Standing there also was this healed beggar clinging to John, Peter and John. With the crowd surrounding him, Peter said to all of them, People of Israel, listen to me. Why are you so amazed by this healing? Why do you stare at us? Didn't we make this crippled man walk? We did not make this crippled man walk by our power or by our strength. The Lord of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has done this. For he has glorified his servant Jesus, the one you denied to Pilate's face, while he decided, while you decided to release uh, him, and you insisted that he be crucified, you rejected the one who was holy and righteous, and instead uh, you begged for the murder to be released. You killed the Prince of Peace, but God raised him from the dead, and we stand here today in witness. In verse uh, uh, 16, and I love this, faith in Jesus' name has healed this man. Do you see it? Faith in Jesus' name has healed this man standing before you. It is the faith that comes through believing in Jesus' name that has made the crippled man walk in front of your eyes. Are you seeing this? These people see this guy. He's always there. Finally, he's raised up. He's jumping around, and they're standing there like, what just happened? And he's saying, you guys, you guys killed Jesus, but God raised him, and now faith in his name, this man walks, hallelujah. This man walks because they had faith in Jesus' name. So let's go um, to finish this up here. Acts 4. So this is um, a couple of chapters over. And now this man had walked and there's a lot going on because, uh-oh, what happened? And the councilmen have brought Peter and John in front of them to say, what's going on? I don't get this, so, so to speak. Acts 4, 7 through 14. They made Peter and John stand in front of the council as they questioned them, saying, tell us, I love this, by what power and authority have you done these things? So they're, at, they're setting themselves up to hear the gospel message. They just don't even know it. By what power and authority? Well, we know what power and authority, right? They set themselves up. So verse 8. Peter, don't you love him, filled with the Holy Spirit said, respected elders and leaders of the people, listen, we are being put on trial today for doing an act of kindness by healing a frail, crippled man. Well then, you and everyone else in Israel should know that it is by the power, here it is again, of the name of Jesus that this crippled man stands here today and he is completely healed. You crucified Jesus of Nazareth, but God raised him from the dead. This Jesus is the stone the builders has rejected and now he has become the cornerstone. There is no one else who has the power to save for there is only one name and we know the name of Jesus to whom God God has given authority by which we experience salvation, the name of Jesus. And verse 13, the council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who have no religious training. 
They then began to understand the effects of Jesus had on them simply by spending time with them. In verse 14, standing there with them was the healed man and there was nothing further they could say. That crippled man was standing right there and they couldn't say anything. They said, by what power and authority? Oh, I'll tell you what power and authority. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what it was. They stood there. They didn't back down. They said, we are victorious in him. They spoke with boldness. And they said, Jesus heals, Jesus saves, Jesus delivers, Jesus protects, Jesus sets free, right? They knew who they were in Christ, and they knew what power was behind that name. And they used that name, and that man was set free. And those councilmen had nothing that they could say because they couldn't figure out what was going on. Why? Because they didn't know the power and the authority that was in the name of Jesus. So when we speak Jesus, trust and faith. Trust and faith that that situation is going to turn around. If you're in a situation at work right now today, maybe you don't even know if the job's going to continue. Maybe you don't know where the money's going to come for, through, uh, for, for groceries, for gas, whatever's going on. You need provision. Speak Jesus. The name of Jesus is the answer. Acknowledge him that without him you can do nothing. In your weakness he brings strength, right? He is perfect. It's incredible to know that the same power that created life uh, then defeated death, right? That lives in us. Amen. There is no higher power and no greater name than the name of Jesus. And someday soon we'll be with him in heaven. Amen. And Philippians 2, 10 and 11. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord to glory, to the glory of God the Father. The only power that can destroy, destroy the enemy, right, or destroy the evil is the name of Jesus. Just like we started out singing that song, or I referred to that, speak Jesus, hallelujah. Speak Jesus over your marriage if it's struggling. Speak Jesus over your children each and every day. Speak Jesus over your job and see it thrive. Speak Jesus over your health and see healings come. Speak Jesus to those fears and see them flee. Speak Jesus to anxiety. Speak Jesus to stresses in Jesus. Speak Jesus over your relationships, your children. Speak Jesus to receive strength. Speak Jesus to receive wisdom. Jesus is the name that is above Above every name. Speak Jesus and receive peace, receive health, receive, uh, get provision. Hallelujah. Speak Jesus. Amen. Jesus is your answer. Jesus is the one that can turn your situation around. I just told you of a few miracles that I've witnessed in my life. And I can tell you right now, you can have the same. Jesus is your answer. The power and the authority behind the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen, church family. So listen, you might be listening here tonight and you're saying, I really don't know that name, Jesus. I didn't know there was any power or authority. I only hear it used as a, as a curse word many times. But tonight I'm going to say, I'm going to pray a prayer and you can have the name of Jesus. You can accept the name of Jesus here tonight. So we're going to pray together and you're going to see your life change. Amen. So if you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, and if you're not living for him, or maybe you have, and maybe you're just kind of backsliding, living the ways of the world, you know you're not going down some bad paths, we're going to pray this prayer and believe it in your heart. Speak it from your mouth. Dear God in heaven, I believe today that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross and that he rose on the third day. Forgive me of all of my sins. Accept me today into your kingdom. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I thank you, Lord, for all you have done for me, and I thank you that you are accepting me today into your kingdom. And I thank you for all of that. In Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, there's a, um, an email there, revbob at cffchurch.org. You can email him. You can call the church. We'll love to talk to you, love to pray with you. We can send you a packet, 
to get you started um, in your newfound faith. Amen. But just remember, church family, the name of Jesus is the name that is above every name. So if you need healing, speak Jesus. If you need restoration, speak Jesus. Whatever that circumstance, whatever that situation is in your life, you speak Jesus and you will see that situation turn around. Thanks for joining us, church family, and I hope to see you on Sunday. Mm -hmm.